Ever play a game of Tetris, Puzzle Fighter, or Candy Crush, and you had a chain reaction? One action leading to another action occurring? Well guess what? jQuery supports chaining. This means if you need to have many methods applied to the same selection of elements, you can list out several methods to do this. Look at the following line of code. This single statement has three methods acting on its elements. We use hide, delay, and fade in. One of the most common things to do is updating and changing content. The common methods to update content in jQuery are .html. This will update every element it matches with the same content. This content can contain HTML. .text. This will update all matching elements with the same text. Any markup will be shown as text. .replace with. This replaces all matched elements with new content and returns the replaced elements. .remove. This removes any matched elements. Another way to update content is passing a function. In this example, an anonymous function is passed to .html. This function returns the text content with em tags. Now what if you want to insert elements? Inserting elements happens in two steps. First, create the new elements as jQuery objects. Second, use a method to insert into the page. These are the most common methods for inserting content. .before and .after methods. They insert the content outside of the selected elements. .prepend inserts the content inside the selected elements after the opening element. You can think of this as the first child element. .append does the opposite. It inserts content inside the element, but before the closing tag. This is the last child element. Next up, we're going to talk about basic effects. So if we look here, this is the effects that occur. And we'll look at the, the JavaScript and see what happens. So <clears throat> the first thing we're going to do is chain the events together. So for any H2, we're going to hide it. Then we're going to slide it down. So we're going to see that happen in here. If look at the HTML. Buy groceries is going <clears> to <throat> show up afterwards. So we'll reload the page. There. It was hidden and then slid down. And next, next part of our effects are the list item. So we're going to do with each list item. We're going to change these effects. So first, we're going to hide the list item. Then for each of them, we're going to run this function, pass it index. So this delay multiplied by the index. Then we're going to fade it in in 700 milliseconds. And that's going to happen here. And then we have a click event. So we're going to use an event here. So list item on. What's the event? Click, run this function. This is an anonymous function, so it's gonna run this in here. So this is the this keyword. So whenever th this particular element is clicked, it's going to fade out in 700 milliseconds. We can also add other um, events here. Let me see. Mouse hover, I believe it works. So now if we look at this page. Okay. Reload the page. There it goes. Now I'm going to hover the mouse over here. Oh. It's not. Is that it? Hover. Well. I think I got the wrong wrong term for that. So click, we click one, it fades, fades out. 700 milliseconds. That's the basic effects. Now here we're going to use animate. So let's take a look at the code for that. So animate JS. So 
this is gonna start doing some stuff here and then we're gonna look at animate HTML. Very basic. It's our basic page. So what's gonna happen? So for each list item on click, we're gonna run this function. So we're gonna call the dot animate method. We're gonna change the opacity and we're gonna add some padding. And let's see, we're passing 500 milliseconds. And then another function, we're going to remove it. So let's take a look at that. So click. Change this to 800. Let's see what happens there. It moves a little bit faster in that 500 milliseconds. Now, if we make this really slow delay, there it goes 5,000 milliseconds. And so that's using animate, and this is using CSS effects. Let's see what else we can do here. So we'll leave that as is, and then continue to the next example. Okay, now traversing. Let's take a look at that. Traverse JavaScript. Okay, so we're going to declare h2 variable is going to be header2. We're going to hide um, our owner unordered list. We're going to append a hyperlink to our header a class equals show and with the word show. <laughs> and now we're going to create something here. So h2 on click run this function so what's it going to happen h2 the next unordered list fade in in 500 milliseconds um, it's children add dot hot children with class hot and add class complete and then h2 find hype any um, anchors and fade them out in 3,500 milliseconds. So let's slowly fade out the link. Let's check out how that looks. Okay, so when I click show, so it's gonna fade in 500. Again, watch this show button, slowly disappearing, slowly disappearing, and they're disappeared. And that's the 3,500 seconds. So that was the next unordered list. Now if we look at the, the source code for this, we'll see there's another unordered list here, and we have this list will not fade in, because this is only the next unordered list. So that is traversing. Okay, now we're gonna do some use some filters. Okay. Filters JS. Okay. Let's get the collection of list items. So list item. So we're gonna filter for class hot and we want the last one. And we're gonna remove class hot. <clears throat> The next one is list item, not class hot. We're going to add a class cool. And so list items that has an EM element inside it, we're going to add class complete. 
and then we're going to do list items each. So each list item, we run this func anonymous function. So we're going to do var this equal this, just to make it a little bit easier. So if this is class hot, we're going to prepend priority item. That's going to run, and then at the end, the list item contains honey. So this is the text contains honey. We're going to append local. All right, let's see how that that looks. Filters. There, a little, a little bit fast. Okay. Now let me see if I can add breakpoints here. Mm. That breakpoint, breakpoint, breakpoint. Let's hope NetBeans behaves today. Excellent. Our breakpoints are working. So the page, it looks empty right now. So let's go over here in NetBeans. So we're going to use break, breakpoints. So we broke at the first line of code. So list items, we expand this little thing out. Let me use a magnifier to really show that. Well, OK. OK, so there's the breakpoint. Program counter and breakpoint. The little green arrow says this is the line we're on. This is the variable we created up here. The list items equals uh, jQuery list item find. Okay. If you, help, if you ho hover your mouse over here, it'll tell you a little bit about it. It says list items equals this jQuery function initialization, and there's looks like there's four elements. If I just click plus, so there's list item one dot hot, two dot hot, three. So those are the four list items there. You can get the content, some length. So we know there's something there in the in jQuery. So we're gonna push this button to continue. Now we move to the next line of code, see? So, removed class hot from there. Let me move this over here. Let's see, anything happen on the screen yet? Nothing yet. So, list item not hot, add class cool. Next, oh, continue. List items has em, add class complete. Looks like it won't show anything yet. List items dot each function. So we see the classes have changed already. Okay, that's just declaring this variable. Now this is hot. This might be a loop here, so let's go. This proper this prepend priority item. Okay, we'll loop again. So that's the second loop. Third loop. Notice it didn't go down here because that that this didn't clean class hot. So let's if we hover over to this, we see this context. List item four, not cool. Hi, no value there, context. All right, that gives us some information about that. Now we're going to continue. And now we're at this, this step. List item contains honey. Honey's not defined, we're going to append this value here local. So we'll see how their thing look. No text yet. Continue. And there. Oh, did it just ignore me? Okay. Load this page. As I loop, I debug through this. Let me exit this out. Okay. A little bit better. Okay. Now, watch as I go through each step and this changes over here.
Prepend. So we're going to prepend the priority item. There it is. Prepended. Next. We're going to prepend priority item again. There we go. Nope, we didn't prepend anything. And then the last one contains honey. So we're going to see local show up as soon as I hit continue. Local party item. Let me remove the breakpoints. All right, so that's that one. So now we're going to move on to the next example. Index numbers. There's the code for that, but let's check this out. Okay. Okay, there we go. List item. Great, less than two. List item dot equals zero, complete, Got right there, and list item greater than two, class, cool. Zero, one, two, three. So that's class cool, less than, less than two, zero, one, one, class hot. And it equals zero, which is the first index, zero, class complete. So if we change this one to one, we should see pinets complete. Exactly two, we'll see honey complete. If you give a wrong value, nothing happens. And so that's using the index numbers. Okay. Lesson 7G. So our form example. Let's take a look at this. Form JS. And let's take a look at the HTML. some text, hit add, shows up here in the list. So let's see how that works. So what we're gonna do is, first step is create a new button, new item button, so that's gonna equal our new item button, new item form, new item form, and we're gonna declare text input as input text. So what first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna show the button, but we're gonna hide the form. So when the show button, no, when show form on click. Okay, so when the form is clicked, we're gonna hide the new button and show the item form. And so the new item form on click, on submit, will prevent the default action so it means don't submit the form. Don't submit the form. We're gonna get new text equals text input dot val. So whatever is in text input, so the input text, we're gonna get the value. And the last list item, we're gonna do dot after. So after the last list item, we're going to add this line of code. Oh, add this information, I mean. So we're gonna create another list item, plus the new text, and close it. Then we're gonna hide the new item form, and the new item button, we're gonna show it, show this again, and we're gonna set our text input back to, back to nothing. So, let me, let me set a 
breakpoint in this part of function. So. Right, so we're gonna hit new item. Hello, and let me hit tab. Okay, here we go. E to prevent default. So do not submit the form. So then we're gonna continue. All right, variable new text equals the text input dot value. So right now this shows new text is not defined. Magnify that. New text is not defined. Okay. What's this? Next line. So now when I hover over new text, new text equals hello exclamation, which I wrote over here. So list item, last list item, after it, we're going to add this. So if I push continue. Oh, F5 is continue. All right, new item form high. So we should see the list item was added. This is still visible because that's going to handle next. New item form hide. So the new item form is now hidden. So there's no new button here. Now we're going to continue. So new button show at five. And there's the button returns because we're asking it to show. And we're going to set the text to nothing. And the text is hidden, but we already hid the form. So if I move this up, again and demonstrate. So, new item. Okay. Hello again. Exclamation. Press add. Prevent default. Grab the text. We're going to insert the text. We're going to clear the text box. And now we're going to hide the form. And then we're going to show the new button again. There you go. Right. And that was example form. Cut, copy, and paste. Variable P. So let's take a look at what this looks like. It happened really fast. Okay. <clears throat> Variable P equals the paragraph selection. Let's see how many paragraphs do we have? We have one. Okay. okay. So we're going to create a clone of the paragraph element and add it after the h2 element. So the clone paragraph equals paragraph clone. Then we're going to remove the original paragraph. Don't worry because we cloned it right here in this variable cloned quote. So cloned quote, we're going to insert it after h2. <laughs> then we remove the first item and add it to the end of the list. So, so we're going to remove item equals first one and detach. Now, move on it, we're going to append it to the unordered list. So that means <laughs> take this and append it at the end of the unordered list. So let's break point here, break point there, there, and
find. So the one poke now has a value. After the H2, which should make it appear over here. There it is. So move item, we're going to detach one of the items. And append it down there. Okay. Now if I use the other one, pin pen two. One, I would like to move this one up. So let's find its name. So that's four. So change this one to four. And it moved to the top. So that's prepend two. Dimensions. Right, let's check out the code. Pages height. So we're going to take um, append height plus list height plus px, then align list width. So we're going to change all the list widths to 50%, but then we're going to change list uh, with id 1 to 125 and list 2 to width. 75%. So this is one, two, three, four. And that's the height of the page. So watch this. Should change it. Oh, that's height in pixels. Breakpoints there, see what's happening. Oh, this height, page, all the properties of the page. Okay, continue. We appended, appended there. Changing, and there it is, 421. So this only happened with the page load. Here 421. So ID page, it's height. Position. JS window slide add we get it from here our end zone footer dot offset dot top minus the windows height minus 500 pixels window on scroll function if end zone is less than the window scroll top slide add animate to the right Zero pixels for 250 milliseconds. Else we slide add stop. Whatever animation is occurring, and then animate this one. Minus 360 pixels to the right for 250 milliseconds. Let's take a look at that. Okay, there you go. Buy List King Pro for only $199. The ad just showed up. There were 
pretty much like all those websites where you scroll down or scroll around and ads just pop up everywhere. That's it right here. And about 16 lines of code. Finally, lesson 7H, our example. So this is where we're going to put everything together. All right. So we're going to set things up. So we're going to declare our variables, list, new item form, new item button. And make a variable item that's empty. We're going to cache the unordered list. We're going to cache the form to add new items, and we're going to cache the button to show the form. Next, we're going to hide the list items and fade them in. Item counter, so update count. So we're going to create a function to update our counter. So it's going to take the var items equals list, list, uh, list items with a class that are not complete. And we're going to get the length, so how many items there are. And then in the counter, ID counter, let's just take that. That's what it looks like. Source code. Let's for counter. There we go. So here, in span ID counter, that's where we're gonna store the text from the counter. Right now there's four. So one, two, three, four. Click new item. And then we're gonna do update count, call the function. And set up form for new items. New item button dot show. New button dot new item form hide. We're gonna show the button, hide the form, and when the show form is clicked to add item, so new button, we're gonna hide the button for new item, and we're gonna show the form and adding a new list item. So we're gonna add the new list item, new form. When item is submitted, prevent the form from being submitted. We're gonna add the text. We're gonna do some click, click handling delegation here. So list item on click. We're gonna grab this. And if it has complete, is the item complete? And if that's item complete is true, we're gonna animate it. else we're going to um, indicate it is complete so let's see how that goes hello again add shows up there let's click something it became complete and added to the bottom of the list that was the traversing now if we click this again it fades out And the counter also updated back to zero. So, hello again. Counter updated to one. This faded in. And that's putting everything together. <laughs> so that's jQuery. So let's create our own jQuery. So I'm gonna click new project, HTML5, HTML5 application. I'm type first jQuery, click next, no template, uh, any JavaScript files. If you type jQuery here, you may see something, but for now, we're, we're not going to add any of these ones. So we're gonna click finished. So we're gonna have empty project, and then let's go back to jQuery.com. Click um, download. Let's see. CDN. Okay, CDNs. Okay, we'll use Google CDN. So let me go back to that. So on the jQuery download page, go down to here where it says other CDNs on the page. So this is the page, you just scroll down until you see using jQuery with CDN and then scroll 
to other CDN. So Google CDN, and you'll see this, and you'll see the 2.x snippet, which we'll just copy here, copy there, and I'll paste it in the head section. Now we have jQuery, ready to go. I'm gonna do inline script for now. And in our body, we have a paragraph. Um, so, hello, this is a jQuery example. Then I'm gonna create an unordered list with some list items. <clears throat> Tomato. Green, red, yellow, and what other colors? Black tomato. Script type equals text JavaScript. And oh, because this is outside the body. Okay, now it's happy. So now we can use jQuery. Anytime dot on events. Click run a function. Um, so do var this equal this. So now what the simple jQuery should do is anytime I click a list item, it should alert me the text that's in there. So let's let's run it and see what happens. All right. Oh, what happened? Nothing happened. Well, that was unimpressive. Oh, that's because I put click. This part is actually a string. I forgot the string. So, alert this dot text. All right. Here we go. some debuggers here and see what's going on. Put the page. Undefined. It's not, even going, it's not even getting here. Okay. Click undefined.
We have a click event. And this is undefined. Oh, my syntax is incorrect. I had this dollar sign inside the inside the parentheses when it's supposed to be outside. <laughs> now we shouldn't get something. Click event. Object object dot text. Function, call it tomato yellow, perfect example. Let's get rid of these, get rid of the breakpoint, get rid of this alert, and here we go. Click on tomato black, page would say tomato black. So list item on click, get this alert, this dot text. So click on tomato green, page should say tomato green. So that is downloading jQuery or actually using a CDN for jQuery and incorporating it into your application right away. And that's it for jQuery.